Hi, and welcome to Travel Time and Talk, a podcast dedicated to travel, tourism, and hospitality industry, as well as dedicated to all professional people working in industry abroad, even those people that made a change life experience moving in another country, in another destination, become an expat. We will have an interview with those people, and uh, please, if you are also a lover of the travel, tourism, hospitality, if uh, simply you have love for this beautiful world uh, as much as I do, please stay connected with the Travel Time and Talk, uh, so stay tuned, shortly I will be back. Hi folks, hi friends, as I told you, we have a special guy, really, we have uh, Scott Whitman, Aka, Anthony, hi! Thank you, thank you so much for having me on. Um, my other name, Scott Anthony, that I go by when I make travel videos, uh, you can see the Anthony, the Italian in the middle there. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I'm really excited, you are such a great guy, and uh, folks, uh, when we, we usually, we listen about uh, travel mindset people. We have here actually the example of a, a travel mindset person, one of the greatest examples. I were interesting to, to chat with you, Anthony. Thank you too, once again, because your uh, story, it's really great story. We have many things to, to say. I don't know if we have enough time, but resuming very shortly, Anthony actually currently is based in uh, Peru in one small uh, uh, country, small, <laughs> already you laughing, <laughs> named Cusco, but originally it's from Virginia, Texas. So from Texas, from LA, also from a great, great uh, lifestyle uh, in your own uh, home country, you are now in this small, small place in some small corner of the Latin American country. Can you tell something about you, please? Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Um, I, it's really nice for me to be, you know, on your, uh, on your broadcast with someone who appreciates and really, you know, embraces travel the way that, the way that I do. Of course. Um, so I was a television editor in uh in in los angeles that was my career and i really enjoyed it for a while and and this happens to a lot of people it may happen to some of the people who are listening right now it's unfortunate that things that we're passionate about can sometimes end you just you just don't want to do it anymore even though you had a great drive to do it in the first place and that's what happened with me and making reality television shows in los angeles uh, as you alluded to, I had quite a nice lifestyle. Uh, I made good money. I had, you know, great medical care, all that stuff. And, but what I really wanted to do was travel the world and inspire people to travel. But within that travel, what I was particularly interested in was plant medicine and things that can make people feel more vibrant, which is why I ended up in Peru. Wow, fantastic. I have to thank you for your uh, first uh, couple of words about uh, our uh, podcast, actually, because Travel Time and Talk, uh, actually representing myself, focusing on uh, slow travel, you know, and so it's exactly online with, with, with your uh, way of, of traveling, you know, all around the world. So I totally agree with you. Uh, this was the main reason because I, we are here today. Yeah, actually, it's no normal, you know, for people to left back, you know, something already uh, created after many years, uh, everything uh, uh, is uh, there, uh, you have everything in your hand, a good life, uh, medical care. That is something very important for you guys there in US. And suddenly with the freedom, totally. It's actually really interesting what you're saying with the word freedom, because I wouldn't recommend that somebody go about traveling around the world the way that I did, which is that I just ate through my savings. Like I didn't really have a plan in place yeah. for like in, for like income streams. I would very much not recommend that <laughs> um, because, you know, freedom 
is an interesting word. You can feel free when you're traveling, but if something terrible happens, and obviously God hoping that it doesn't, but if something terrible happens and you don't have proper health insurance or you don't have resources, you can find your sense of freedom to be vanishing very quickly. <laughs> I've seen yeah. some terrible things, not often, but some terrible things happen to people on motorbikes, for example, in Southeast Asia. Um, I'm not trying to discourage people from, you know, being on motorcycles and stuff, but just be aware that you're putting yourself in a situation where there may be more like, you know, it, it could be tricky. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Um, obviously, uh, the, the freedom in the way to realize that now is the time of your life is the moment to, to feel some freedom, you know, to, to, to do something, to, to start to do something and see what's come out uh, on the way. Oh, and I may guess uh, during your walk actually come out uh, Cusco. Why Peru? Okay, so I had this big interest in, so part of my problem with the editing world, editing television in Los Angeles is that, you know, it has many wonderful things. Obviously, you're, it's a respected profession. It, it, it pays well, all those things. But I myself found that being in a dark room for 10 hours a day, every day was, um, I felt my energy, you know, I'm 49. So this started happening like around 43 or whatever. My energy was like, every day was kind of like going like this. And I said, well, who knows how to improve this situation that so many people feel? You know, they, they get in their 40s, maybe it happens in your 60s. I don't know, it's different for everyone. But you can reach this point where your energy level is just terrible and, 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 and you want to recap, you want to recapture the feeling of how you felt when you were young. Obviously, you don't need to travel the world to do that. But, um, but my idea was to travel the world and find people who could help us with that. Okay, so now I get back to your question. No, no, it's fine. I, I, I started with Peru because there's a lot of wellness people here. Sometimes they call them shaman. Yeah. You know, sometimes they call them, I don't know, maybe they call them brujos, you know, like the Spanish word for like witches. Curanderos is more polite. Um, but they have studied how to heal people and make them feel not heal. Sorry, not like a medical healing, but like to make them feel more vibrant with uh, with ayahuasca and other types of plant medicine. Um, Peru is famous for being a spiritual center, drawing in people for, for healing and, and feeling better. That was why I came to Peru. Okay. So when, when I'm based in Cusco in the Andes mountains, which is close to a junk, you know, a, a couple of different jungles. And, uh, that's why, that's why. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned about the jungle. I saw a couple of videos, your videos actually in the jungle there, it's great uh, experience uh, with all animals there in the forest in the jungle um, obviously you are a passionate traveler but from what comes this passion for traveling you know because you, you were in the city in the office making a tv show certainly knowing uh, the what's happened all around the world but it's quite different than be around the world so from what comes this passion a great question pietro um Thank you. so basically uh it, the reality tv shows that i focused on for a, a lot of the beginning of my career they were travel shows okay uh so they were travel shows that that were made by a company called bennett productions which is uh run by a really great man who died recently casey bennett oh. um but anyway so i was making these tv shows for bennett and about, you know, going to Tahiti and Bora Bora and like, you know, like uh, uh, Indonesia and like all that, you know, Hindu like statues of these crit, like the arms all coming out. And I mean, I was just transfixed by the, the mystery of it. And I think after a few months or a year or something of working on these shows, I kind of said to myself, like, but I don't want to be the guy like sitting here looking at this stuff like i want to be the guy in bora bora 
you know like i want to be the guy on a motorcycle in india and you know so these shows that i worked on kind of this like passion for travel was welling up inside me and i took a trip uh during one of these programs after it ended i took a trip to thailand or sorry to cuba that was the first time i ever traveled outside the united states i went to cuba and that was it that was it for me yeah, now yeah. it's all it's it's all over man <laughs> i cannot i can't live my life the way that i was living it before <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, I I can understand what, what you mean. I know uh, as well Cuba. Uh, among uh, my ten years of traveling uh, through the Caribbean island, you know. But uh, obviously, uh, is the key, the first key for something, you know, that uh, slowly come in uh, in our mind. In the in this case, your mind came came in slowly, showing you let you touch actually let you touching through your tv show simply reading stuff or uh, you know translating what the action of other people actually and these shows were so beautifully shot pietro and, and like so beautifully produced that you know how could you not want to go to iceland <laughs> after you watch you know you have to You know, yeah. how can you not want to go to Moscow or Italy, you know, or any of these places that are legendary for their beauty and their culture and the food? Um, but yeah, these shows were the catalyst for me to I just realized I wanted to live a different life. Now that okay. happens to a lot of people. Yeah. But the question the question is how can you engage in this new life should you choose to to do that and you know, you need a plan. You know, whether it's writing for companies, you know, obviously writing you can do in a lot of places. Uh, whether it's writing or it's web design or you make travel shows or, you know, you're a YouTube star or whatever it is, uh, you better start working on it, like now. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> that's yeah. my advice. Yes, okay, uh, already you gave some advice, but we can uh, go touch this mm. point again because I know you can give a great advice. Speaking about uh, two points together, very important nowadays, actually, all destination branding, you know, all this ability from the people to, to, to speak about other countries in certain way. So uh, the, the, the most impactful, effective way, obviously, if you say something and you know the place, you are on the place, you can really transfer a real emotion. You are able to really uh, give the right message to your audience, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to present what you feel are interesting things about other countries, it definitely helps to, have, to immerse yourself. I mean, I'm what our tribe likes to call a slow traveler. Exactly, um, exactly. I mean, Uh, when I go someplace, it's probably at least for a month. When I go someplace for a month, I feel like it's a brief trip because of my experience and the way that I do things. Um, although I did spend 30 days in Nepal, which was quite rich in the experience, even though 30 days is not a ton of time. Wow. If you spend a month in Nepal and Kathmandu and Pokhara and hiking in the, in the uh, Himalayas, you will not be the same after yeah. that happens yeah. i appreciating your uh, uh, mentioning about slow travel uh, uh, from this perspective what does it mean to you to discover so new remote destination what it means to me particularly as Amer as an american because as some of the people who are listening right now may think about americans some of that stereotype is a little bit true I mean, we are a bit self-centered, you know, in America, we're obviously kind of more by ourselves than, than Europe, you know, than countries in Europe. And that has, is like a metaphor uh, for Americans being a bit, perhaps in general, a little bit less educated than Europeans about, you know, about other countries and their customs, their cultures, what they're like. And I sought to sort of get rid of that within myself with my travel to remote places to take okay. a different to take a different viewpoint on what it means to have a good life 
on what it means to feel vibrant because that can be done at almost any income level you know that's above a reasonable amount obviously if you're but you know there's a billion people living on a dollar a day yeah, yeah that's the that's the kind of thing that feels just like a statistic like an empty statistic when you live in america your whole life maybe perhaps but when you start traveling you realize the truth that people don't have clean water you realize the truth of the the trash problem around the world you realize the truth of having to decide between buying medicine and buying food that's real life for a lot of people in the world. Um, and it's a very sobering thing to, to see. Yeah, it's very interesting uh, what you are saying, uh, speaking about responsible travel, trying to save the land in the sense of land, really land, you know, because there are many, plenty small uh, areas that really deserve attention from the world. They need really and, and, help. And as the second part of answering your question about what is important to me, why remote travel? Yeah. You know, if you want to get involved with, uh, you know, helping the rainforest or stopping the, the sort of looting, if you will, of the jungle and things like that, it really helps to actually go to the jungle. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as with most things in life, you will feel closer to an issue if you have like palpable with your hands yeah. experience. It's not the same, man. It's not the same watching David Attenborough talk about the jungle <laughs> as going to the jungle and monkeys are climbing next to you. And you know, you're going, it's just not the same, man. No, you, and now you are leaving that situation. It's really something special. You compare immediately, instantaneously. You compare and you are saying, Wow, what time it's you doing? In, it's incredibly invigorating to see a place like the Amazon jungle. Um, you know, that can be accessed from several different countries. I mean, we're talking about Ecuador, we're talking about Brazil, we're talking about Peru, but you know, many different ways that you can access the Amazon jungle. It is a life changing experience to feel that much Nate, that much raw energy in nature. Uh, in a location. I just, I can't say enough good things about, uh, about going to the jungle, particularly where I like to go, which is called Manu jungle in Peru, wow. uh, which is probably the least visited jungle of tourists for tourists in, in Peru, but my favorite. Um, yeah, that's, that's what, that's what I have to yeah. say about that. I know, I know, uh, the feeling in some way, uh, not, uh, totally, obviously, uh, I remember some time back uh, through the, the northeast of Brazil and uh, close to the Amazon areas, you know, on the north of the north. And the first my approach to that uh, jungle, you know, uh, it was a short experience, but uh, I, can't Im I can't imagine what you actually lived and you are living usually there. But I feel uh, inspired already talking with you i feel already such high energy and uh, vibration and positivity you know and uh, power to to go out there and to say hey i am here i want to make my contribution to to support this area of the world and not only that but of course it's a really great setting to if any of your audience is actually interested in doing ayahuasca the famous plant medicine of the amazon jungle that goes back 5000 years maybe even 8000 years um you know that's part of my exploration of plant you know plant based i don't like chemical things as as much if i can avoid it but like plant based uh uh, solutions for uh, vitality. Yeah, 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 great. And um, what we are saying, uh, actually anticipate uh, one uh, question. Uh, considering the, the current global situation we are all living, and especially the tourism industry, travel and tourism industry, all this pandemic all around the world, how you are facing as a travel mindset person, you know, as a traveler, how you are facing or how you faced 
in the first uh, phase of the pandemic, you know. But uh, what we sure. are uh, living out there uh, in the way to keep uh, high all your <laughs> vibration and, you know, to, to keep uh, your enthusiasm and motivation. Yes. Um, okay. So Peru, if you look at the statistics in terms of the world, is doing very, very poorly with numbers in terms of the death rate, as statisticians refer to it. The death rate in Peru is absolutely awful. It's in the top three, according to some renowned, you know, like, I don't know if it was CDC or who it was, yeah, yeah. but somebody, somebody renowned. Um, but Cusco is not Peru. Okay. And Cusco is not Lima, you know, it's a different, uh, there's a mosquito, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this is um, exactly but, one example of what you are living in terms of uh, slow, you know, in terms of uh, live like a local, you know. Normally, actually, mosquitoes are too much of a problem at this altitude. But, um, but anyway, Cusco is 430,000 people high, high in the Andes Mountains. Lima is 11 million people, an incredibly dense city, one of the top 20 largest cities in the world. And, um, you know, it's subject to more sort of mayhem, if you will, and danger with the virus. So it, that's another thing that's interesting about the virus is sort of putting everything into one basket, which it's not. Uh, Cusco is quite safe and it's why I'm still here. So to, to answer the other part of your question, even in Cusco, which has been relatively safe compared to a lot of parts of the world, including my home country of the United States, uh, it was obviously distressing at the beginning, very okay. distressing to see businesses close, to see people scared, to see people worried about feeding their families because you can feel those things. Um, but, you know, it is a safe place in the world, Cusco, and I feel lucky to be here. Also, the Peruvian visa laws, which touches upon your travel question, okay. you know, they're much, they're much more lenient than other countries. Mm. You know, if you stay too long, you pay a fine, that's usually the end of it. But if you stay three or four months past your visa in Indonesia, you might not be going back to Indonesia ever. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, thanks God. I mean, and you are living a different approach. So let's say in comfortable way, you are uh, uh, having your daily basis uh, activities. So we are happy. So I'm very happy for you and still uh, we can expect more your uh, videos and uh, information. By the way, I saw uh, one video, I mean, among others, the video describing your house and uh, the beautiful window of and out there, you know. Uh, Fox, please go in uh, his YouTube channel. In the meantime, if you want to mention uh, those links uh, already right now, you can uh, go ahead because I can uh, add after during the, the, the end well, of the video. You guys, you guys who are listening, um, when Pietro posts the link to my YouTube channel, look for the one that says my $150 apartment in Cusco. Oh. Look for that one because uh, people really enjoy it. Obviously, it's not as cultural as other, you know, that, that's it's kind of a superficial thing. Like, this is where I live. But even in its superficiality, it's quite interesting to see how people live for $150 exactly. a month. Um, exactly. I mean, by the way, Pietro, that was the cost of my parking space in Los oh. Angeles. Just <laughs> yes. my parking space. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I mentioned it, because uh, exactly I agree with you. Um, it's also a way to, to let the people understand exactly the daily life. Um, actually, when uh, people are uh, looking for a new apartment, uh, never mind if are a guest or tourist or, uh, you know, local people. I mean, also you give uh, some idea of uh, local stuff. By the way, how you feel uh, be uh, there and uh, live like a local? How you feel? Right. Yeah, I mean, I have my local market which is obviously quite different from Whole Foods where I used to shop in Los Angeles. 
Um, but actually just as lovely, if not more so in certain other ways. Uh, you know, the Quechua women, they come down from high up the hill, way above me, and they sell their fruit in the market and they sell, you know, lots of different things. And I tell them hello in Quechua, which always makes them laugh because, uh, hello, how are you doing in Quechua is Ayancho Kishanki. And, um, they're like, whoa, 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 this guy's not a tourist. This guy exactly. really lives here. Exactly. It's great, uh, your example. So living uh, like a local, this means uh, uh, to, to share and to let uh, the local understand that you are a part of some community, of their community. So already mm -hmm. you create a great synergy. And also showing them that you, you speak, uh, I, I don't want to say their language, but the slang, their slang. Sure. I mean, even if you know four or five things in Quechua, it blows them away. Exactly. Because nobody with a face, you know, with this shade of, you know, <laughs> nobody is speaking Quechua, you know, percentage wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, I, mean, I mean, some of these women, not the ones in the market because they're used to it, but some of these women, they don't even speak Spanish. Like the ones that are walking down the street with okay. the lot, with the alpacas and stuff. They don't actually really speak Spanish that well. They, they speak Quechua. Okay. Uh, I feel also speaking with you right now that really you uh, feel the time, the local time. You are very calm, very, you know, relaxing. And, uh, you know, this also in Peru, also in that Cusco. <laughs> that Definitely. Cusco, the way that time works is different from the places I've lived in New York and in near Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles in my life. And, you know, Cusco time is a different type of time. Uh, but that's the case, actually, in a lot of places that I've been, okay. like Cuba, for like Cuba, for example. So like if you go to the bank in Cuba, you're likely to find many, many couches in the middle of the bank lobby. And that's because people just sit there, wait, things just take a lot, you know, you could be at the bank for two hours doing one simple thing. Um, and that's just the way it is. You know, people don't, they don't really get that upset about it. Maybe they uh, brought some coffee and a thermos with them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But this is, uh, um, if we, if we want to uh, reflecting on the, on the, on the life, actually, that this is some great fact to to be able to to have uh, this feeling, you know. It's it really definitely great. is. I mean, 10 years ago, I don't know about now, but 10, 15 years ago, they did a poll of countries in Europe and which country took the longest lunch break. And France won at an hour and 25 minutes on average lunch break. Wow. That is why the French live long <laughs> and they eat cheese and drink what, you know, these guys live almost as long as uh, anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to suggest any uh, typical food, any typical plate? Uh, I mean, what do you like uh, to eat mo the most? So in Andean culture and in around Cusco, uh, believe it or not, I mean, sorry to upset some of your viewers, but the guinea pig is like a delicacy oh the little hamster and uh they call it kui c-u-y that's a delicacy in andean culture i don't particularly care for it um but what i do care for is something that's more celebrated in lima places that are closer to the okay. ocean which is ceviche ceviche <laughs> tell us please what is ceviche? Uh, uh. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, to have like um, the spices and the oh. onions and the raw fish and the lime, you okay. know, all mixed, all mixed together, uh, the lemon and the lime and a little bit of salt in there and uh, just really good raw fish, you know, ingredients, Fantastic. incredibly gratifying. Now, ceviche is more of a problem where I live in Cusco because I'm high in the mountains. So there's just really trout, which is trucha okay. in, uh, in, Sp in Spanish. And, you know, I, I prefer to have salmon and other types of fish. So 
and Cusco ceviche is not as celebrated, but but Lima, wow, it's wow, like the wow, ceviche. Wow, 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 it's wow. like the ceviche capital of the world. And uh, how many months already you are uh, located in Cusco? Already, I've been here this time. I've been here for 14 months, based in Cusco. I mean, the first month I went to the jungle and I did all kinds of. I went to Machu Picchu for the fifth time and I did all these things. Um, I went up into the Quechua communities high and way higher than me, like high in the mountains to see them like weaving, like, you know, clothing and stuff. Super fun. Wow. And I have some video, I have some videos on my channel about that too. Like when the, the Quechua women up there, they do like, uh, Pachamama ceremonies and like they celebrate the earth and stuff okay, like that. Yes. But this time I've been based in Cusco for 14 months. Oh, and certainly you have many facts, many happening uh, uh, through your journey. Uh, can you share some uh, fact that uh, uh, create a great impact on your life? Something that uh, creates some special impact for you? Uh, you mean regarding Peru? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So I had a girlfriend who was born and raised in Lima, a very beautiful woman. <laughs> and uh, very talented. So she was almost an MD, a medical doctorate. She was on her way to becoming an MD, but she's also interested in becoming a shaman. Wow. Uh, so she had a lot of healing background. We went to uh, see the Yatiri mystics in Bolivia. And uh, we went to go see the Yatiri mystics and the guy told me, he said, you're going to get paid to make travel videos. It's going to happen in two months. I mean, he said it in Spanish because he couldn't speak any English. I mean, if you go see the Yatiri Mystics, trust me, it's it's a journey to go see these guys. <laughs> uh, wow. But anyway, so it brings somebody that speaks Spanish. But uh, he said, you're going you're gonna to make these videos and you're going to get paid. It's going to happen in two months. So a month and a half later, I get a call in Cusco from a producer and it's like, Hey, if you make these videos, we'll pay you to make the videos. And I was like, wow, how did that guy know that? Wow. I mean, now that that's crazy because I had not even been in contact with any Luca, of these Look people. at me. I have uh, some feeling now. It's incredible. <laughs> so I mean, the These guys, I don't know. I don't mind when people like your people who are listening to us right now, if they say, oh, I don't believe in that stuff, you know, whatever. Yeah, they could be right. I mean, maybe it's just coincidence. But when it happened, I was just like, you know, it was one of many magical things that had happened to me in Peru, where it just seems like magic. Like, you know, it's like a dream. I moved out of the US to make travel videos and get paid for them. and that it happened it happened <laughs> so congratulations and uh, of course is a uh, impactful enormously in one person somebody will tell you something and after a couple of months happen it's actually uh, we come back in in the beginning of our talk actually speaking about spirituality and uh, some research actually some motivation why people eventually going to travel in Peru. You made very strong this part, rising uh, your spirituality on the way. Yeah, one of the things about spirituality, I mean, it's kind of hard to see Machu Picchu without feeling spiritual in whatever way that means to you. Machu Picchu is a place that disappoints very few people. Um, it, it has a tremendous impact and it does feel spiritual. And one of the things about spirituality and travel, they do go really well together because part of spirituality is empathy. And in order to have empathy for the human condition, you actually need to see how different humans live, you know, like yeah. it, it, it will bring you closer to people that you thought maybe perhaps you thought they were your enemy, you know, maybe you really disliked Muslims. Yes. Um, yes. But maybe if you go to Cairo and you hear the call to prayer, you'll see how beautiful it is because it is beautiful. Yeah, sure. Um, and I've really enjoyed meeting Muslims all around the world. Um, and I've never met a Muslim I, I didn't enjoy talking to, actually. I mean, I'm sure they're out there. 
Um, obviously, there are extremists in every religious uh, choice you can make. There's going to be people who are doing things that are terrible. Um, but I think it's important to remember that spirituality and empathy sort of go hand in hand with the with the travel experience. I love hearing the call to prayer and I'm Italian, you know, I was raised Catholic. So like my grandmother, she doesn't know anything about my grandmother. If she heard the call to prayer, she'd be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. Actually, uh, from a cultural uh, aspect of the travel, obviously it's very important to, to be on, on the country to, and to realize actually, no, as a tourist, no. It's important, yeah. I mean, it's different perspective from tourists, yeah. obviously. But if you live yeah. like a local, you interact locally, engage locally with the people. And so you can feel with your hand, with your mind, with your eyes, everything there is different. And I think it's bad when people that travel extensively for their life look down upon people that travel in a more brief way. You know, they go someplace for a few days or a week or whatever. I think it's really bad to try and make yourself out to be better than those people because that kind of travel has value as well. Um, I find more value in a different kind of travel. Yes. But the kind of, the kind of travel that I do came into being from those shorter trips yeah you know sure. and sort of and sort of but so anything can i i would never be the person who's like oh you're not really traveling you only went to some place for a week it's like good for you man like yeah go out there yeah go out there and if you want to go to cuba for a week like i did it was only a week hey it changed my life it changed my of whole course. life Of course, uh, nowadays uh, it's very important. Uh, however, our motivation, the why we want to go there, why instead then, uh, you know, simply I want to go there. Your point is great. And it's especially important. I guess people need an even more compelling reason these days if they're going to endure the risks of travel, which yes. now are a little hot, which now are higher. Yeah. Yes, yes. Personally, I miss a lot to travel. I miss a lot uh, flying uh, out there. But uh, I'm always a uh, positive and I believe that uh, as soon as possible, everything will uh, come again as usually and we will be out there again, meeting people, interacting and enjoying the world and meeting also uh, people like you. Uh, I would love to, to speak about many things uh, because it's really great to chat with you. I have just the last couple of questions. You want to share some advice for people eventually they want to travel. You want to give some advice uh, uh, for uh, Peru uh, regarding uh, Cusco or whatever? Sure. Um, I mean, as far as giving advice on traveling during this time, I just don't think I'm in a position to do that because it's just such a personal decision to put yourself at, at, at risk by, you know, obviously the more people in your immediate sphere, uh, your risk increases how much, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, yeah. but I, I, I know that it increases some amount. Um, so that's a really deeply personal, my, I can tell you what I feel, which is that I probably won't be leaving Peru till middle of next year. I just want to kind of see how this plays out a little bit. Um, you know, now I don't want people sticking things up my nose, you know, like, you know, so, um, and I respect and realize that that's part of travel now. So I, I'm just going to give it a little bit yeah. more, a, a little bit more time. But, you know, when things get back to normal, you should definitely come to Peru. I mean, I can't think of, There's countries that are as inspiring as Peru, obviously, but I don't know that there's a country that's more inspiring than Peru. Uh, you touched a great point. I believe uh, it's uh, incredible uh, your experience there, the country and uh, the dynamic of the, the place, really. Daily basis can be different every day. So you are involved in different things every day and you become happy more, more and more <laughs> every day. I saw your yeah. face laughing. I mean, I think being in nature is important for everyone. I think that's actually kind of a universal rule. 
that sometimes we forget if we're in a city environment, you know, you yeah. get in a certain routine, but nature is really important for your health. It's sure. really important for generating new ideas, like to take a walk in a forest or, you know, I don't know, whatever is nature to you. Yeah. Uh, but but that is certainly prevalent where I live. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. And uh, if you permit me to, to say, actually, still is different than, than when you are in the city and maybe after five hours on the PC, on the computer, you maybe think, OK, I'm going to go outside now and you go in the park or down the street. It's different when you are in Peru there, where you are now, and say, okay, I'm gonna go a little bit outside in the park, in the jungle. A hundred percent. And at my job in Los Angeles, when I was in the dark room, you know, fixing the television shows, I would go on walks three times a day, at least 15 minutes each walk. They were more like 20 or 25 minutes. And sometimes when I came back to my chair, I would get in, in trouble. You know, my, 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 my boss would be like, you can't, you don't have that kind of job. You, you can't just leave. Like, and, and I'm like, that's the way it is, man. Take it or leave it. I mean, I said it in a much nicer way because I'm trying to get along with people. But, you know, basically I said, take it or leave it because People in, in environments like LA and New York, and they're just trying to get things done as fast as possible. All those things can wait, man. Like you got to think about your health and you got to take a nice walk every day. And you know what? If people tell you, you can't do that, find another job. That's, that's what I say. Yeah, actually we are witnessing on this uh, uh, precise time of the, we are living all globally because the pandemic, we, we start to understand actually what you are saying. There are just such simple things you can do to elevate the vibrancy of your life. Drink a lot of water, go on walks like all the time, especially after you eat. Um, the Chinese have a famous saying of like, walk a thousand steps after every meal or something like that. It's very good advice. It's been around for like 4,000 years. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, go on walks, get sun on your face. Don't pay attention to that sun, skin, cancer. You know, I mean, yeah, definitely don't get burned. Don't burn yourself. But yes. you, need, you need sun on your face. You need it. <laughs> Positive vibration uh, that uh, make us, uh, you know, happy and motivate, you know, of course, the nature. The nature really can save our mind psychological uh, state you know soul mind uh, can you tell us just the last question uh, scott anthony anthony there uh, if you don't mind uh, your next program at this point can you tell uh, a little bit actually you are uh, writing for your uh, company actually for this company and so you have uh, some specific uh, next program so the way that I've been living the last six months in Peru, I write blo marketing blogs oh, for, two for two companies in the United States. When I move to Vietnam next year from Peru, wow. my, my goal is to make really enjoyable, interesting travel videos that really inspire people about travel uh, in Vietnam. So I will be doing that in addition to my writing stuff. Uh, but right now I've temporarily focused more on making money to live, <laughs> you know, and stuff. <laughs> but when I get to Vietnam, you will see the amount of videos sort of greatly increase. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. First of all, congratulations uh, also for uh, your next program. Please let us know. Let me know. We, we stay in touch because definitely I will be a great ambassador of your uh, uh, special uh, emotion out there. Uh, Thank you. And so I can combine with uh, those my travel as well. Uh, and will be really interesting for Travel Time and Talk, you know, in terms of Thank podcast, you. Thank uh, you. So, thank you. So I really, I really appreciate it. No, that. it's a pleasure for me uh, as a traveler too. But obviously, uh, I follow you from some time and uh, I'm excited. And uh, thank you. Thank you really, Anthony, for uh, this short conversation. I saw uh, behind of your shoulder there a great light, the light of Cusco, actually the sun. 
really it's a beautiful color and uh, that light coming right on your mind on your soul and you are uh, sharing with the travel time and talk thank you i really appreciated your time and uh, please want to give us some uh, details of your website your youtube channel or uh, the, the blog etc i will uh, add also in the video as we also share the video through youtube channel over the podcast sure sure so thank you again because pietro is going to put the link to my youtube channel there below if you guys want to click it and check out some travel video in peru bali java thailand nepal brooklyn that last one was a little different from the other one uh if you want to check out any of those things i have travel videos from all those places my youtube channel is one way ticket with scott anthony all one word and um you can look me up as scott whitman that's w-i-t-m-a-n in instagram and you'll find me on instagram yes. uh and uh so yeah check it out if uh you want to enjoy some fun and really most of them are pretty short uh travel videos yeah yeah so thank you again there listener out there please uh i hope you uh took the note about uh, such great links and uh if you are watching uh i believe you're going right now to to see uh, his youtube channel as i did and so where else uh, enjoy your uh, Cusco Peru and uh, all your favorite plate uh, and uh, please uh, if you meet the people all around uh, say a special hola uh, da este lado del lado de travel time talk por favor puede decir hola uh, desde Pietro and uh, you know what in the, the end of my podcast and video as well I'm usually say yeah uh, we can share uh, uh, positivity with all people listening and watching so are you ready to say alongside with me yeah when i say three okay one two three yeah yeah, yeah. thank you and please stay connected with the travel time and talk for the next episode always action with the passion yeah <laughs>